Okay, so here we are live using GCS. Mark Hoffman in Germany is doing a mission flight and we are recording it live with GCS. So this is uh, more exciting than the SpaceX Starship launch. So using the GCS system, as you can see Mark has launched the plane. I'm able to monitor in real time via 2G SIM card mounted in the plane and uh, Mark has just launched. Now the previous tracks you can see in orange are from the first flight which was aborted. Mark is struggling here with very high winds in Germany. Uh, 20 to 22 miles per hour with gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. So Mark is probably just testing the plane here to see how it flies now. He's made some adjustments to the plane. He's uh, moved the uh, IMU ignore rate higher and uh, put a little bit of extra P gain into the PID, into the PIF, sorry. So it looks like he did a launch there and has landed again. Okay, so we've launched again. Climbing altitude. It looks like, yes, we're on our first, on the way to the first waypoint. So waypoint one of 19. I'll just zoom the map out so we can see the waypoint mission in its entirety. So we're flying up in between the buildings and then we will loop around at the end and come back. We'll zoom in. So you can see that the GCS system is giving us um, a few stats on the left hand window. So we've got Mark's call sign and he's flying his AR, his ZOHD AR Pro today uh, with LI on. And we see the UAV location and we can see the battery voltage, the current draw and uh, throttle percentage doesn't seem to be working at the moment and we've got his elevation and azimuth. And you can see what mode he's flying in so he's in waypoint mission mode at the moment and you can see his distance from home is just approaching the 700 meter mark. We have his sat count 20 sats and we have his RSSI value. You can see his milliamp hour used and we can see his efficiency so that efficiency should change. I guess he's used quite a lot of power on launch and also with the wind, I'm not sure of the direction, um, he could be using more power to fight against that wind. And we've got his flight time. Okay, so 1.3 kilometers from home. Still heading away from home. On to waypoint three. some reason we seem to have the horizon locked we're not seeing any altitude direction or speed values at the moment oh no here they come back we had a little bit of a pulse there and we seem to have the map just zoomed out slightly the plane is still traveling So we're at an altitude of about 300 meters. Bank banking there around that turn. Still maintaining good altitude. Now I'm heading to waypoint 7 of 19. I believe Mark is flying with R9 on this flight. Still holding strong on 20 sats. Uh, 
Yes, uh, looks like he's having fun with the wind. When we are getting some telemetry data on the horizon, you can see we are having some significant roll and pitch movements. So it's telling us that we are about 30 meters away from the waypoint, waypoint 7, on the top left. The value has just increased. I'm not sure of the, uh, the pulse time in between the data that's transmitted across the 2G network something that Mark will be able to confirm when he talks about this experience. Okay, so on the right-hand pane it looks like he's off mission. Actually, he's flying towards me. He'll never make it to the UK. Um, he just doesn't have enough power. He's flying towards the Kranken house, which is the hospital. Nope, he's gone back in time and we've obviously got some delay issues with the telemetry, so we must have done the turn. We didn't get that telemetry, so he is now on the home straight. So there are some issues with the transmission of the telemetry. We do seem to be getting much smoother data now on the horizon. See, we banked there around that turn. Heading towards waypoint 11 of 19 on the mission. Just about hitting 11 now, and we should see a bank turn. Yep, that's looking good, that's looking better. Really kicking up some speed here. He must have a tailwind now, so he's kicking, you know, 83 to 90 kilometers per hour. And the efficiency is 61 milliamp hours per kilometer, so it's pretty good efficiency. Heading towards waypoint 13 on the return leg of the flight. You see we're getting much more smoother arcs now. We're getting the telemetry data, so we're getting the much nicer curves in between the waypoints as Mark Banks around the waypoints and heads to the next one. Maybe there is some ground-based interference that's uh, messing with the 2G signal as he goes further away towards the Kranken house. Okay, pushing into waypoint 14. We'll just zoom in a little bit more. Some more detail. Passing 15. We seem to have gone off track again, slightly there. See where the data goes off track, it doesn't hit the, the waypoints. Uh, could it be coming in for a landing here? He's down to 100 meters altitude, according to the display. Seems to be maintaining that altitude. Okay, looks like he's pushing out again to waypoint one. So I believe on this mission, Mark has 10 circuits of this mission.
and I believe he intends to launch his Dart 250G at some stage and do a chase. Uh, if he does that, he's got to be absolutely crazy flying the 250G in 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. Um, that's something I wouldn't want to do. So probably unlikely that he'll do that today. Yeah, so we're pushing out on the second circuit. Let's see how this circuit goes in terms of the where the telemetry is pushed across the cellular network. Just hitting waypoint three on the outbound leg of the mission. And on to four. Okay, so he must be hitting the headwind now because he's only only doing 32 kilometers an hour so that kind of gives us an indication of how strong that wind is when he's flying into it and he's maintaining about 200 meters altitude so we'll keep our eye on that speed for when he does the uh, turn to the, the home point see where he starts picking up the speed when he's got the wind assist just on waypoint four a kilometer from home so picking up a bit of speed now an extra 10 12 kilometers an hour so it must be slightly crosswind now I would assume and gaining some altitude so Mark does have a few altitude changes programmed into the mission so we can see he's climbing fairly gentle climb and just hitting waypoint five just zoom back out a little bit you can see more of the mission okay speed has really picked up there so must be coming from a northerly direction and now he's turning back more into the wind And we see the current draw is up to nearly seven amps. Okay, so I think we're heading up to this point on the last circuit is where we had some issues with the telemetry. So let's see if we have a repeat of that. No, he looks like he's aborted. We have got en route to home, so maybe the wind conditions are just too much to continue. So let's let's watch this. Uh, he's coming straight home. He's not hitting any waypoints now. Just straight back to home, and I will assume he will land. Yep, we're on a straight course for home. Zoom out the map slightly. And we'll zoom into the home point. Watch the plane approach into the home point. There's the plane. So he's in acro mode now. So he's probably bringing it for a manual landing. Uh, 
and then swinging around the lake and then down to the landing strip I would assume yep look at the altitude we've gone negative so he's uh, yeah he's landed so uh, that concludes this uh, this test of GCS um, in terribly windy conditions but overall I've got to say I'm really impressed me sitting in the UK narrating and watching a live flight using this technology has been really exciting and a great privilege to work with Mark today to uh, be able to share this this with you so um, I hope you enjoy it I'm sure that Mark will be giving you a lot more information and detail about this exciting technology uh, in upcoming videos and through um, INAF fixed wing group on Facebook so uh, I think it's time uh, time for a beer have a great afternoon everybody